America, here we are again. This is not a new nightmare, it is a recurring one. Another mass shooting, this time Texas. At least 19 children murdered, shot dead with a high-powered rifle. Two teachers also killed. An elementary school turned killing field. There are new details this evening, none of them good, none of it easy to hear. The best we can hope for tonight is for context. In these early hours, there is no comfort to be had. ABC's Maria Villarreal arrived in the scene in Uvalde, Texas, shortly after the shooting. She joins us tonight. Byron, this is still a very active scene here at the elementary school, and it'll continue to look like this throughout the night and probably even to tomorrow morning as well. We understand right now the Texas Rangers are now leading this investigation. They brought in a mobile crime scene to help process what is happening inside the school. Right now it was too much for local law enforcement to handle the weight of the tragedy, too much for their hearts as well. Tonight, horror and heartbreak in this tiny South Texas community. Earlier today, a mass shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, killing at least 21 people, including 19 children. The deadliest school shooting in nearly a decade and the third deadliest in America since Virginia Tech. The size of the devastation here, the number of lives lost is very significant. It's elementary age kids. 9, 10, totally helpless, totally harmless, the shot in their own classroom. That image should really burn in people's memory as to we shouldn't have to relive Sandy Hook. Officials say the alleged gunman, Salvador Ramos, also shot his own grandmother before attacking students at the elementary school. What happened uh, in Uvalde is a horrific tragedy uh, that cannot be tolerated uh, in the state of Texas. Among those who lost their lives, 10-year-old Javier Lopez, who was in the fourth grade, his family sharing this photo with us this evening. 19 students were killed and two teachers, including fourth grade teacher Eva Mireles. School has children that are in second, third, and fourth grade. Two responding officers were also shot but are expected to survive. Officials say the alleged shooter was killed by responding law enforcement. Mr. Uh, Romas, the shooter, he himself uh, is deceased uh, and is believed that responding officers killed him. Good evening, fellow Americans. Tonight, President Biden speaking to the country on yet another mass shooting, just days after 10 people were killed in a grocery store in Buffalo, New York. I had hoped when I became president, I would not have to do this again. Another massacre. Uvalde, Texas, an elementary school, beautiful, innocent, second, third, fourth graders. The rampage began late this morning. Officials say the alleged shooter shot his grandmother, then turned to the school at 11.32 a.m. local time. An 18-year-old male who resided in Uvalde. Uh, it's believed that he abandoned his vehicle. There's a car crash outside Robb Elementary School. The suspect, we're told, is immediately engaged by a Uvalde Independent School District police officer. And that doesn't stop the shooter. He's wearing body armor. He shoots the, the police officer and then makes his way inside the school. We need to respond to South Grove and Mill Street to establish a perimeter. Multiple state and local law enforcement, FBI, ATF, and Border Patrol racing to respond. Sources say authorities have recovered an AR-15 style rifle yep. and numerous magazines. The school with some 600 students locked down. Reportedly, students crawling through windows to escape. Parents desperate for any information. We just hear all kinds of gunshots going off, like nonstop, like constantly gunshots. And the world here all scared on the ground, fearing for our lives. In the mayhem, families trying desperately to reunite with their loved ones. One father here searching for his 10 year old daughter. If we could get to the uh, funeral, home. The funeral home. Why would you ask me that? Because we can't find my daughter. What does this say about where we are right now? I mean, this is a small town, man pretty sad really sad 
what this world's coming to. We're also learning more about who committed this heinous attack. Officials say the alleged killer, 18-year-old Salvador Ramos, was a student at Uvalde High School. He's believed to have acted alone. Law enforcement sources telling ABC News they're investigating possible social media accounts linked to the alleged shooter, which include images of guns and other violent material. Law enforcement also telling ABC News that he reportedly sent videos and photos of guns to users on various social media platforms. One user saying that last week he showed himself with guns, making statements like, wait till tomorrow. Law enforcement is collecting every piece of information they, they can get their hands on in reference to social media, friends, associates, families. What did they see? What did they hear? My guess even by now, they probably got a pretty good picture of who he is, what motivated him, and how he acquired like this AR-15. Located 80 miles west of San Antonio, Uvalde is a small town with just over 16,000 people living here. Robb Elementary School has about 600 students in the second, third, and fourth grades. The school's last day was supposed to be this Thursday. The close-knit community tonight feeling the shock. Today's shooting comes amid what seems like an explosion of violence across the country, just 10 days after a racially motivated mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, where another 18-year-old killed 10 people, all black, at a top supermarket. He shot a woman, he shot a deacon, he shot another woman, and then he went in the store and started shooting again. This tragedy also drawing a parallel to the horrifying mass shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut, nearly a decade ago. That killer shooting his mother in their home before driving to the elementary school and killing 20 school children and six teachers. Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy, who represented Newtown's district in Congress when the tragedy occurred, tonight giving an impassioned speech from the Senate floor. What are we doing? Our kids are living in fear every single time they set foot in a classroom because they think they're going to be next. What are we doing? Nowhere else does that happen except here in the United States of America, and it is a choice. It is our choice to let it continue. What are we doing? It's become a sobering, shattering reality in this country, from Columbine to Virginia Tech to Newtown and Parkland. Now too many generations of students, from adolescence to young adulthood, knowing the fear of violence in their classrooms. Certainly on a night like tonight, one of those nights that it is right for us, the people, to say, why aren't we doing more to keep our children safe? Don't my children and your children have the right uh, to be able to live? What about that constitutional right? We've tried for 25 years to keep our kids safe, and we're not doing enough to keep them safe. Tonight, a community warns its own, with so many asking here, why now? And what will anybody do about it? I feel fine going back to school, but like, I do feel worried, like, a part inside of me feels like, what if this ever happens again? What if it does happen again? Our thanks to Maria. I'm joined now by ABC News Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas. Pierre, I know it's been a long day for you. You've been reporting on these kinds of stories for years now. We've seen a disturbing rise in mass shootings. What are your sources in law enforcement saying tonight? Fire and law enforcement sources tonight are devastated. The fact that so many children were killed is heartbreaking and is upsetting to everyone. They're concerned about copycats. In fact, it was a big concern after Buffalo and now this. We're in the midst of a surge, both in terms of active shooter incidents and mass shootings. It all began during the pandemic. In 2019, there were 417 mass shootings. Last year, the number had jumped to 693. That's just an incredible spike. And authorities have long worried about lone wolves, specifically extremists to include white supremacists, supporters, supporters of ISIS, and they are deeply concerned about deeply disturbed individuals as well, Byron. Pierre, we have a sense of what the pundits and politicians will say in the, in the days to come, but what do those in law enforcement say has to be done? They say we've got to do a better job of identifying these shooters before they kill. 
Time and time again, we see that there are signals missed. And these shooters have posted something on social media. They've said something to family or friends. And then we find out after the fact. We don't know if that will be the case this time, but tonight law enforcement is dissecting this man's life, trying to answer the question of why. ABC's Pierre Thomas. Thank you so much, my friend. We'll see you down the road. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.